in the hood with it. Welcome back to the Collective Clips where you already know I get it in. But before I get it in, let's hit that like and subscribe button thing. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directing the direction of the dope content that the gun is kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. I couldn't do it without you. We're going up on this channel and it's all because of you. And for that, I can say I'm very humbled and I'm very appreciative. So are you guys ready for another super? Super knack. What is a knack? Not a claimer. I'm not a claimer, right? So when I was in the youth authority, there was knacks. We call it knacking it out. You know, when the homeboys horse played, the homeboys went in on each other. Damn, bro, stop knacking it out. You're being a knacka, right? You're being a straight knack. Knacks were guys that were pretty much unaffiliated, non-affiliated. Um, we considered them knacks. We thought we were better than them. It was kind of a bullying tactic. Watch out, look at this knacka, right? Straight up knack. But also a knack was a person that bumped baking soda breath on the doors, that woofed out his cell, that perpetrated. Anything bad that you could think about in the youth authority is what we considered a knack. A knack was not a leva. There was a little bit of a difference. A leva was someone who was part of a gang who fell off or basically got felled off on, right? He got pushed up out of the mix because he wasn't cut from that cloth or he fucked up. There was no DPs in the youth authority. There was no, a. Hey, let me check you real quick. It was either you were with the program or you're out of the program and you were considered Levi and all your shit got took. Didn't mean you were a punk. It just means you fucked up. Sometimes dudes would get made Levi because there was Vatos. It happened mostly with the Southerners. There was Vatos from other barrios that were deeper. That, that was their enemigos. So, of course, they'd make them Levi. They'd drop them Levi. It happens. It's just like with the dropouts, whole non-active thing. There's a lot of dudes that are righteous, solid dudes, but they got pushed out of the situation for whatever reason. Whether it was individualism, homeboy favoritism, whatever. Prison, YA, two different animals. But the youth authority is where this story took place in Fred C. Nellis. So trip out on Super Knack Fat Cat, right? And oh man, did he play himself in and out of pocket. It'd be like that sometimes. One thing I can say for sure is this, gente. Never go into a prison, county, jail, youth authority, or any type of situation. Juvenile hall, for, for whatever it means, right? And try to perpetrate or be something you're not. Because someone is going to recognize you. You're going to be discovered. It's only a matter of tiempo. It's a matter of time. For someone says, well, look at here, brother. You were you were claiming Kumi, right? How the fuck are you claiming white power now, brother? Right? But uh, you did bring an ounce of dope, so maybe I could clear it for you. Right? And it's, just, it's just different. So when we were in Nellis, we were on the cusp of splitting with the dogs, or the dogs were splitting with us. So the Norteño movement was solid. There was Bulldogs and Norteños were together. There was no difference. They were F-14 Bulldogs. They were homies. But this was around the time, 92, 1992, when the Bulldogs started to break off little by little. Some did it a little bit quicker than others. Some, it took them a lot of time. They were undecided. They didn't really know what was going on. They had XIVs on their cheek with a Bulldog. They didn't know how to fucking scrape it off. It was just bad, right? So it was a very tumultuous situation. For, especially for the dogs, because a lot of them were fight the feeling like a two short song. They didn't know if they wanted to let the the huelga go or if they wanted to you know keep the collar on with the huelga twist. They didn't know, so they were like whopping. It was crazy. So I'm in the oil. I'm in the hole. Um, I got in, got into it with some southerners in the school area. This was around the time that we got into it, and Whack 100 was there. It was that time, in fact, that I was in the hole, and I think they had given me like seven days in the hole. You didn't get much time. Now, you got to remember, with the Youth Authority, different animal. There was no protective custody. There was no PC up. There was no none of that. You know, when it was time to get out the hole, you got your ass out the hole. And they didn't give you very many, very much time. I've seen, there's been times with myself where I went to the hole. I fought in the morning, went to the hole, got out for the afternoon, just in time for the next round, get off then, get back. Next thing you know, I'm pulling back up to the compa at 6 in the evening. They kicked me out because they just ain't got no room for me. You know, I didn't stab no one. So that's how that was. But on this occasion, because it was a melee in the school area and their gang of motherfuckers got knocked backwards, they decided to sit me down in the hole. So I'm there. Now, there's a southerner named Smokey. He's right next door to me. He was from Grape Street. Smokey from Grape, right? And right on the other side of me was a vato named Fat Cat. Well, we didn't know he was Fat Cat yet. He was Danny Boy up until that point, right? So while I was on the main line, let's, let's rewind it a little bit before I went to the oil um, there would be bulldogs that would still pull up and they were still considered homies, Norteños, because they had to be told like, hey, bro, it ain't like this. It ain't like that no more or whatever. Like the, the split was just, it was new. There was whispers about it. It was happening, right? So in Northern California, in places like OH Close, Preston, DeWitt Nelson, Carl Holton, Chad, 
And these facilities, they were already up on it. They were ahead of the game because it was Northern California. So the Bulldogs and North Angels were going at it heavy. There was some heavy fucking rock and roll going on there. Rock and roll gangster motherfuckers. Like Delano Forever Rarer said. Thuffer and thuck attached. The Bulldogs are getting off everywhere they go. So were the North Angels, right? But down south in Nellis, we were trying to stick together like motherfucking flies on shit. We didn't know exactly what was happening. We were way out of bounds. And no one was telling us. I mean, we'd get phone calls. We'd make phone calls, call the homies. They'd be like, yeah, man, we don't fuck with the dogs no more. I'm like, shit, I'm right here with six dogs on the compa. I do, all right? As long as they have my back, I had theirs. So anyway, this dude rolls up, okay? And we already had Danny Boy from the East Side Fresno Bulldog. He was already there. And uh, people know who Danny Boy is. Danny Boy had a reputation. He had came from, I think, Carl Holton or OH. He was putting in work. So they shipped him a couple times to Nellis. The first time he came, him, Dreamer, uh, Smiley from Hanford, a couple other homies, they got off at the chow, in the chow hall, or right before they got into the chow hall, and they got off with the Southsiders, and they got they shipped them all back up north, right, except for Smilon, um, but then they, they end up coming back, little by little, one by one, and Danny Boy pulls up, and so Danny Boy was on a different compa, I remember, we were on a compa for like a second or two together, and then he ended up going somewhere else, I think he was either on Monroe or Hayes, but then he ends up fucking getting off. And going with the rest of the perros, the ones that were really putting in work, they were on TAF. They were doing a TAF program, which was like a shoe program. You know, they sent a lot of Northerners and Bulldogs over there. That was Bulldog country. They had that. So another dude rolls up. Fat Marrano, straight. Ugh, looked like a mugre, right? He pulls, looks like fucking the, the male version of Sheila. So as he pulls up, the homies, he's not on my compa. He ends up going to Kennedy on my Madison. No, no, no. I was on Kennedy. He went to uh, Monroe. Excuse me. And they're like, hey, there's a homeboy Danny Boy here. And I'm like, nah, fuck that. Danny Boy, bro, he'll, he'll get off on you. Like, that ain't a homie. That's a dog. Because I knew enough to know enough that that Balkan was with the program. Like, he was really on his separation shit, right? It was him, LT Dog, Joey Boy, Shorty from uh, uh, Faith 300's dad. All these different dudes. They were like K9. They were really bulldogging it. Porky, Bubba, Dopey. Like, these dudes was really with that, that program. But then there was other bulldogs like Spooks and, and other guys that came that didn't really know what was up yet. They found out later. They did their movidas, but until then, they didn't know. So this dude rolls up, and the homies over there on Monroe are like, hey, yeah, the homeboy here, uh, Danny Boy, he's a homeboy, though. He's like, fuck that. I'm still in North Daniel, even though I'm a bulldog. And I remember he had a big old Fresno bulldog, the face, the one like right there, tatted on his forearm. So he was a dog. So it was all good. I remember I was skeptical about him the first time we went to the school area. Like, nah, uh-uh. No, no, no. I hit him with the Dikembe. I don't know about you, bro. I didn't trust Bulldogs at that point. Because they'd be like, oh, no, I'm a homie. I'm a homie. I'm a homie. <laughs> be on your shit, right? So you really had to be up on game. Southsiders weren't really tripping at that point because they were letting Northenders and Bulldogs kill each other off. They were just kicking back, playing peanut with like, hey, this supposed to spread, homie. What's so That They were on their shit. So we were really going through the motions. Not only did we have to go to the school area and worry about the Southerners getting on your head. There was a bu bunch of brothers that was mad because Northerners was down there and we was fucking up the program. Damn Northerners. And then, of course, you had the Bulldogs in the mix that were one foot in, one foot out. You didn't know what the fuck they were doing that day. Some days they were like, fuck it, this is North. Dude. There's a gang of Southsiders. Next day they were like, we rock with the Southsiders. What? It was different. So anyways, back to Super Naka. This Vato gets there. He's not on my compa, so I don't really have too much interaction other than the school area. And he was cool. He was with the business, man. He got in a couple melees with the Southerners. He was knocking fools down. He was just, he was cool. But I remember he was always dirty. Da, thinky, and dirty all the time. The Vato that looked like Linus from the fucking Peanuts, just mobbing around, just, he didn't have a dirty fucking towel with him. But, it, you know, the type of dude that takes a shower and still needs one? You know what I'm talking about. The Vato that it doesn't matter how many times he shaves, he still needs to shave. He's just dirty. He needed to shave his back. He had a hairy ass. He's fucked up. So anyways, I'm like, what's up with this dirty ass Vato fucking kicking back with the homies? They're like, nah, that's the homie though. He's he's down. And then I seen him in action. I was like, okay, he's with the program. It doesn't matter how you look at the end of the day, but Sasuke, get away from me. Just at this point, please. You know, because I might get jumped on. I might have a black eye permanently. But at the same time, man, I do it smooth. At least I'm creased up, right? And this Vato was disheveled. That's the word from word of the day. Disheveled, right? So he came... Looking like deviled eggs and disheveled. He was disheveled eggs, right? Not sparkly. He came in unsparkly. And so we ended up going to the oil. Now fast forward, I get into it. This is when Wack was there. Cash Jones, right? We get it, me, him, and Sheik. And there was another dude who ended up jumping in. We got into it with the Southsiders behind the bend. 
And um, I'm in the hole. I end up getting caught up on it, of course. And as I'm sitting in the hole, Fat Cat comes in. He gets into a fight, a one-on-one -on -one in the school area with the South Sider. So he's there running his motherfucking dick sucker, bumping baking soda breath. And Smokey from, uh, he was from Great, right? He's on the other side of me from Watts. And I'm not going to lie, Smokey was solid. I used to chop it up with him a little bit. Like, what's up, Smokey? He's like, oh, what's up? And he'd be like, hey, I got these chips. I don't want them. And so what we used to do is he'd smash them. Real talk. I ain't tripped. This is real life, right? He'd smash them and shoot them under the door. And then we'd fish. We were fishing even back then. We were ahead of the game. Why, babies? You know what it is. And so that dude, Fat Cat, wanted some chips. So he's like, hey, now you got to understand, as soon as we got in there, as soon as he got in there and knew he was going to do a couple weeks in the hole, he stopped being in Northenio. Now it was Bulldog Nation on his. It was all Bulldog. So he's like, hey, dog, hey, dog. He never talked like that before, right? Hey, and Smokey was like, hey, bro, I'm not a Bulldog, homie. Yeah, I don't fuck with you and this, this, and that. Because Smokey was in there for battery packing a Bulldog, right, on the compa. So he's like, I don't fuck with you guys, bro. You guys ain't Northenios no more, man. I'm cool with this dude, but I ain't cool with, that, with you. So they're going back and forth. Now, mind you, I'm in the middle cell. So I'm hearing this. It's reverberating off my ear bones. So as I'm listening to this, Fat Cat is just doing too much. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why we call him Fat Cat. But he's just doing too much. He keeps going. So this is what happens, right? He's woofing, woofing, woofing while Volta from Bakersfield pulls up. He's on the other side of Smokey. So Smokey shoots me chips every day. He don't need chips. Shoots him. His homeboy comes. So he's like, fuck it. I'm going to bless my people before I bless a northerner, which is I, it's understandable. I understand. So he's like, hey, gun. Oh, he called me skin at that time. Hey, skins, I, I can't shoot you the chips anymore. One of the homies pulled up. He's starving like Marvin. I said, do you, bro. I'll show him we're going to miss them chips, but I understand, right? So he starts busting his homeboy. Again, Fat Cat's like, oh, man, that's right. The buster this. You didn't want to shoot him the chips. Ooh, you got played, homie. You got your chips took by a south sider. Like, motherfucker, shut up, stupid, right? But I'm not into bumping bacon soda breath, but I did tell him a couple times, you stupid fat motherfucker, right? Even though he probably would have knocked me out my boot heels, I just was a youngster. I didn't give a fuck, right? I was trying to earn stripes. So the dude from Bakersfield pulls it. This dude's woofing. Well, it's shower time. So what they had done, they, the Bulldogs had just almost killed a dog named Dopey, right? They metaflighted him up out of there. I've told that story. They put major, major metal in him, right? So they were stopping group. Like they used to put us in groups like all the Northerners would go, five or six Northerners would go to the shower together. Five, or six Southerners would go to shower together. That's how they would do your little program. They'd leave you in the shower area for like an hour. So you basically pace with a whole bunch of homies for an hour. Um, they stopped doing that because they just had a dude almost get killed. So they were just doing it cell by cell. So as this dude, uh, 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 Danny boy, is walking by, the dude from Baker's is like, hey, what's up, fat cat? And that fool looks at him and he just kind of turns, right? So we hear this on the tier. So that hit the Smokey, I call him the homie. He was cool. The South Sider says, hey, who's fat cat, homie? You know what I mean? Hey, put it out there, is he? And he was like, Oh, that's the homie, bro. I was in OH with them. That's the homeboy Fat Cat from Baker Stresset. And he was like, nah, bro, you got it mixed up. That Valtor's name is Danny Boy. He's a bulldog. Like, we don't fuck with them cats. And he's like, hell no, nah, bro. I know that dude. I got in riots with them and shit. That's the homeboy Fat Cat. So this dude's hearing it. He's hearing this conversation because they're doing it in the like hallway area rather than outside, right? I'm listening. And I'm like, hmm. I always thought this motherfucker was a flipper flopper, right? Straight flipper. So as we're chilling... I chime in. I'm like, hey, Smokey, that about the probably is from Baker's Fool. He was like, nah, hell nah. That fool ain't no Southside arrested. Don't even come at me like that, bro. That about the bulldog, right? I'm like, what's wrong with being a bulldog, right? Anyways, you know how it is, man. If you don't know, I'm telling you, nobody wanted it. Everyone thought they were better than everyone, period, no matter what. So that fool's like, I don't give a fuck what this dude says. That's Fat Cat, homie. And says his name. His name was like Danny Aurelio Garcia or some shit like that. I remember. It was, right? So everyone's saying, fat cat, as he's walking down the theater, fat cat, what are they, fat cat? And this is what that dude does, he's big and fat, he's walking, handcuffed, right? The cops are with him. He goes, he turns to his son, he goes, so what, right? <laughs> I'm laughing like, oh, this punk, he talking all that high power shit. This motherfucker was a South Sider for real though, right? So anyways, they take him in the cell. Now everyone's going to bump baking soda breath. We're going to go hard in the pain. I ain't even going to lie, I participated to some degree. We're all on our windows, and they're like mesh screens, so it's loud. Everyone can talk shit. You got the whole tier. So you have bulldogs that are way over there. There's a gang of them. They're in Taft. It's like an L shape. And this side is the caja, the box, the hole, right? Fat Cat was in the last cell, like I said, then me, then Smokey, then, of course, fucking, uh, what do you call it? The other dude from Baker. I forget his name. 
So that dude was from Barrio Bakers. He's like, what's up, fat cat? What's up, Bessie? He's like, hey, bro, the fuck you doing over here? And he was like, nothing. I'm just chilling, man. Right? And he was like, hey, bro, I heard you're a bulldog now. He was like, I always was a bulldog, bro. I played you Vatos. He was like, fuck no, bro. You were a homie. You didn't have no bulldog tattooed on you. You were a homie, bro. Stop that shit. Right? And he was like, no, no, fuck that. I never, I always was a bulldog. So now you have the bulldogs. They're woofing. Hoo, hoo, hey, dog. Hey, dog. Right? They're doing their thing. They're like, you ain't no fucking bulldog. You're from Baker Stressen. That dude's like, hell yeah, I fool's from Baker Stressen. That dude said, so what? No one's going to do nothing to me. I'm from Fresno Bulldogs Baker Stressen. <laughs> I said, God damn. So, hey, Elon Musk, I'm here to tell you, you didn't create the hybrid. Danny Boy did. Or Fat Cat or whatever his name was, right? So now, not only is he woofing on Bulldogs, he claims he's the hybrid, the Bulldogs outsider, right? And really was rocking that way. The cops were passing out lunches. They're like, here's for the Southerner. Here's for the Northerner. Here's for the fucking Bulldog Southerner. I don't know what he is, right? <laughs> they just give him this. So anyways, we're laughing. We're clowning. We're going in on him. This fool's going mad in his cell. Literally insane. He's banging on the window. I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to kill this buster next door. Then I'm going to kill this Southsider. Then I'm going to kill this other. Wait, he's from Bakersfield. I don't know why I'm still going to kill him. He's going crazy. The Bulldogs are like, dog, if we get out of here, we're going to kill you. And so these are some high-powered dogs that have really just almost killed a man. So he's like, uh, just talking his shit. So I explained to you in the beginning of the spill, you cannot stay in the oil. There is no PC. There is no, I can't go out there because I talk too much shit. There is no none of that. Get your fat ass up, dirty guy. Come on, disheveled. Get up and get out. So it's his day to get out of the oil, right? I get out of the oil and come back. I was only doing a week. He was doing like two weeks. I came back like on his second to last day and I'm in on him, right? Soon as I came back, now I'm further down from him, but I'm like, hey, fat cat. Hey, fat ass. Fat ass. You know what I mean? Hey, shoot the moon. Shoot the moon. We're talking shit to him. Hey, Smokey's still in there. That fool's doing like a year in the hole for battery packing out somebody, right? So that vault is in there. Bat battery packed a bulldog. That vault is in there like, hey, fool. Fuck that fool. That fool's been talking hella shit, right? So I'm like, whatever. So they come to a cell. They literally had to peel this dude up under the bed. He was refusing. Oh, I ain't going out there. They're going to kill me out there. No. No, everyone's going, fat cat. I mean, fat ass. Lard ass. Lard ass. <laughs> and they're going in on him. Um, they're calling him pork riding. Chicharron. Orale chicharron. You know what I mean? Hey, orale bakers. Dude from Bakersfield like, fuck that. Is he from Bakersfield? Orale Fresno Baker. Fresno Field. Hey, Fresno Field. Are you from Baker's No or Fresno Field? Right? They're going in on him. Gang of Southsiders are like, if we see you, homie, we're going to get you. Because he was disrespecting Southsiders. Now, you got to understand. When they finally, it took him about an hour to peel him off the wall from his cell. Ex literally mace him and extract him and put him in a whole different cell to get him up out of there. Um, the cop, He was swinging on cops and everything. They're like, no. I don't give a fuck if you hit me or stab me. You're not staying in the hole. You got to go out there and face the music, brother. Right? This dude had hands. I seen him. I don't know what he was scared of. He's a big old fat fucker. He could have went out there, put him, but he knew something, something bad was coming. Well, here we go. So they pull him out and they put him on a compa called Washington. Now, Washington and Nellis was all paisas. Southsiders and paisas and a lot of the Southsiders that were, that were there couldn't speak English, right? It was a compa. Northerners never went there because that's we can't speak Spanish. But they sent a gang of paisas there to this compa because they had an ESL class, a special class for them. They were trying to teach him English as a second language, right? So they don't know where to send this fat fucker. So they send him over there, right? Because they're thinking, hey, he spoke Spanish. He could stay out the way. That compa, they hardly went to school. They had their own little school area type thing because they couldn't speak English. So they, all, they had their own classes. Couldn't no one really communicate with them to let them know. Anyways, the Bulldogs, they are non-existent at this point on the main line. Not that they weren't about the shit. They just were all in the oil. They were all getting off, right? Doing their shit. So anyways, he goes over there. He's good for like a week. And the South Sider Smokey gets word out there like, hey, bro, this is what it is to some high power cats. Some cats that are really with that, the shenanigans, right? And there's a dude. I don't, I'm not going to say his name because he was really high power, right? He ended up, he's doing life right now. He killed a gang of people. But he's in Nixon, which was like a... Another shoe program, but it was for mostly Southsiders. They sent a couple Northerners there, but it was it was very rare, right? It was all Southerners, and it was like a, a, a level three building, like a two, uh, 270 or 280, uh, 270 design, excuse me. And so that's where he's at. He gets out. He's trying to flip the script. He's trying to kill every North Daniel off. He's trying to kill every Bulldog off. Like, he comes with that YTS mentality, that Chino prison mentality. Like, these Vatos can't walk our linea, 
And we already know, so we're targeting him. Like, if we catch this motherfucker slipping, we gonna carve him up real nice. So there was a lot of tension during this time. Motherfuckers forgot about Fat Cat. He was just someone to talk about and clown on a little bit. This fool has to end up going to the school area. What happens is they figure out he can speak English, so he starts tutoring the paisas on that compa, right? Bad mistake. They sent this dude to the school area the first day. Like a baboso, he should have got off. You know what I mean? The Fresno Field fucking murderer. He should have got off and handled his business. He didn't. He thought, oh, now he's claiming paisa. Now he's the Fresno Bulldog Bakersfield 13 paisa, right? He's everything in one. This vato, like I said, Elon Musk, you didn't start it. This vato was Tesla before Tesla was Tesla, if you know what I mean. This vato goes out like a big, fat, dirty Tesla, and he's in the square area the second day in E, over to see. They put his head up his ass faster than the rabbit gets fucked. They smacked him. Hey, usually when the when the South Siders would get off, there'd be like one or two fools with battery packs and gang of fools just chunking them from the shoulders, maybe a piece or, or two. You just never knew what you were going to get. It was like a box of chocolates, Forrest Gump style. Well, they didn't gump this dude. They forested him. They took him out there, right? He hit the bin like a dummy. And we weren't focused on him because one thing about the Norteños is we had to worry about what we were going through. Fuck what this fat fucker's going through. He's on his own. That about looks like he's eating good, so let him. You know what I mean? I'm over here starving. Ain't got no commissary. Southsiders are fucking trying to steal shit out of my locker. I'm really having it bad, right? I ain't worried about some fat fucker that, that can't shave right. This fool hit the fucking square area second day by himself. And about 20 South Siders packed him out, literally, with battery packs. Look it, they smacked him so bad, they fucked that dude up. I never seen him again. He ended up going to the hole. He was a super knack. Now, I say that to say this. There was a fucking metal detector. Anyone that's been in Nellis, you'd walk into the square area. You'd walk past the control office. This, it was all brick. Through this metal detector one by one, and then it was a quad area. There was classes up here, classes there. The bend that way, classes on the side. I, I don't know what the fuck those classes were on the side. Maybe that's where the dudes were getting hormone pills. I don't know. I never went there. That was That's where Fat Cat was. But as we're walking straight through, um, these guys smacked him so bad with battery packs, they had chunks of metal, chunks of steel, that they fucking, they were tripping, man. I remember a CO got fired off that shit, or they called them GSs. He got fired off of that because it's like he let these fools bring that shit through, but they smacked him. Bust his whole shit. You know what I mean? Hey, motherfuckers was in there trying to carve off his, his bulldog fucking tattoo. It was wild. Anyways, that was Super Knack, the hybrid, the, the fucking Fresno Bulldog Southsider. So when people say, hey, the Bulldogs were clicked up with the Southsiders back in the days, that's absolutely not true. There was actually a red light put on Bulldogs, but there was one guy, just one, who actually was in his own fucking mind. And I don't even know if he's no longer with us. They fucking did bad, horrible shit to him. They might, they might, he might be the one and only PC in the Youth Authority because they got rid of his ass. Anyways, with that being said, are you guys ready for a Super North Daniel today? It's a good one, man. I talked to Rick, and uh, I, I'm, all I can say is I'm laughing. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive, struggle, struggle, and strive for what I truly believe in. And that's the betterment of all people. And Fat Cat, if you're watching this right now, you fat fucker, you still own Before, when we were good on the linea, you owe me a bar of soap. I'm going to need that in the Libra 2000 fashion. Still. I don't. Hey, when motherfuckers owe me, they owe me forever. I'm going to need that. The gun.